something to say something, um, be our eyes and ears and we'll come support you if we need to have to. Cincinnati police are partnering with hotels for training following the mass shooting out of the 32nd floor of a Las Vegas hotel. Good evening, I'm Paula Toady. And I'm Brad Johansson. No one can say yet how the Las Vegas shooter managed to get 23 guns into his hotel room without anyone noticing. Hotels are now taking a closer look at how they do business, and Local 12's Deborah Dixon tells us how Cincinnati hotels and police are partnering to learn from Las Vegas. The Las Vegas police officers who became an improv SWAT team breached Stephen Paddock's hotel room as he fired into the crowd of concert goers below. One of the cops said they were tripping over rifles. He had 23 weapons. How did he get them in there without anyone noticing? This could be a ski bag, golf bag. Quite honestly, it could be a rifle bag. Just be aware of that. Downtown's police captain Mike Neville is working with hotels on employee training because of Las Vegas. One bag is for a rifle, the other for a snowboard. Or is it? I want them to know that just because it doesn't look like a gun bag that it doesn't mean there's not one possibly in there. Hotel employees are expected to get lessons in profiling, how to observe customers, what traits to look for, although Stephen Paddock did not fit the profile of a madman. When police got inside the room, Paddock had already killed himself. They did not expect him to be a 64-year-old man with no criminal record. Besides the weapons, he had other equipment for his murderous plan. A couple of laptops he had in there, uh, a lot of drills, yeah. and drill a lot bits. of drills and, and drill bits, all kinds of tools, the dust from the explosive breach, and then you got the flashing lights. I mean, it looks straight up like out of a movie. A horror movie Paddock was able to produce because he told the hotel he did not want house cleaning for days. Some hotels won't allow that. A few that have uh, told me that they put that even on their website, that after so many hours, the room must be cleaned, inspected, just for the safety of everybody. We're back to see something, say something. Laura McLean practices this when she gets on an elevator. She's a nurse in town for a convention. I start looking at who am I on the elevator with, if it's somebody I don't know. You start looking at those details because you just say the what ifs. If this happened, could I be able to describe who I was on the elevator with? Could I be able to describe the surroundings? You know, did somebody have a briefcase? What color was it? Did they have their hands in their pockets? We have to wonder, did anyone ride the elevator with a mass murderer and sense something but not say something? Deborah Dixon, Local 12 News. Paddock killed 58 strangers before killing himself. The obsessive gambler said he sometimes gambled 14 hours straight and took anti-anxiety medication. 